Hello, welcome to Making Photos. I'm Ian M. Butterfield. Do you want to know how to make 360 degree spinner images and how to display them on your website? Well, that's what I'm going to cover in this video and you'll learn how to make images that look like this. <laughs> I had a client in the studio uh, a few days ago and I was teaching her how to uh, how to create these types of images. So I thought this would be an ideal opportunity for me to go through it for uh, my YouTube audience. So let me first of all tell you a little bit about what's happening at this side of the studio. Over here I've got um, my uh, my usual computer set up, laptop and uh, main monitor. I'm in Lightroom as you can see and actually here are the uh, the products uh, that I was uh, photographing for my client. Uh, I'm going to go through similar techniques but not with uh, with pottery, with something else. I've The only reason I have this set up is so that I can tether, so that I can see the images as I'm creating them. So at the other side of the studio We've got the camera and the desktop studio set up. Let me explain that to you. So over at this side of the studio, camera on tripod uh, and the orange tether cable that links through to Lightroom. So as I can, as I said, I can see the images on, on the screen there. Uh, I'm doing this with just one light, one softbox. The reason for that is not normally the lighting setup I would use for this, but uh, when I was working with my client, she needed to be able to replicate uh, the lighting setup uh, at home with her own uh, uh, setup. That was the point of the training. So I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So single light, where I would normally have had um, an extra light, a fill light coming in on this side, I've just put a piece of white card. I'm just going to bring that in slightly. That will reflect light back onto my subject. Uh, my subject for this is a, uh, a small toy car, um, is what I've chosen. And for the turntable, i take the bit of paper off there. What I've got here is a, a simple um, Lazy Susan bought from, uh, from Ikea, as you might be able to see on there. And although I have marked it up with various markings on there for being able to turn it uh, particular numbers of degrees, I'm not actually even going to use that today. I'm going to put, the, put that down. I've put it on um, a scoop of white card, a uh, standard uh, tabletop studio setup for me. And I'm going to put a piece of white paper on top of it. How did I cut the white paper? I just simply inverted the uh, Lazy Susan, drew a circle around it, cut it out. That will go uh, on top. Now, I did a quick fold into the middle, just very, very gently. You can't see it on, I can barely see it myself. You certainly won't be able to see it on video. So I know exactly where the center is when that's on there. To prevent the car from moving, I've put a, a little bit of blue tack uh, on the, the base of it and the center of the car and I'm just going to put that bang in the middle of the uh, Lazy Susan. So in theory now if I turn that round that should move around a center point more or less. Now <laughs> I'm just going to start up uh, the tethering over on Lightroom and then I can set the camera up ready to do a couple of test shots. So here in Lightroom, I go tethered capture, start tethered capture, and I put in a date, the 16th, and I'm going to call it 360 demo. And I can set a few things up. I'm going to say custom text there. That just gives me a naming, my standard studio metadata, and OK. It uh, has detected the, uh, the camera. I can have a look at what the camera is seeing by pressing live. So now I can have a go at focusing up and I can keep an eye on that to make sure everything is uh, in focus. So that appears fine. I can also check what this looks like as it turns round. That's looking good. Now that will do. 
So with that in place, take it out of live view. Uh, lighting, I say, is uh, the soft box on there. Plenty of light over onto the scene. So let's turn that on, turn the, the trigger on. And I've already metered that up at F8. So I should just be able to take a test shot and we'll get an image on the screen. And that's not looking too bad at all. Now, I'm also going to just do test shots in different positions because I want to just see where the reflections might be and how it looks in different positions. That's fine. Again, that's a position where I expect I might get a reflection on the windscreen. And looking over. Not too bad, actually. I'm happy with, uh, with that. So, I set that in the middle there. And what I now need to do is just create a sequence of images uh, with this lighting. Now, because I've done test shots at the beginning, so I know when the start of the sequence is, I'm going to do one shot that um, indicates the start of the sequence. And that is, I put my finger in, do a shot with that in there, so I know that every image after that is part of my sequence. When I get to the end of the sequence, I'll simply do another shot with two fingers in, and you'll see that. Now, I'm going to do the sequence. First shot, I'm going to start turning this round, and I'm going to turn it anti-clockwise, and just move it slightly. Now, I'm aiming... Um, with my brain thinking of the positions of a clock, I'm trying to get 24 positions on here. Now, if I don't manage to quite get it right, it actually doesn't matter because, as you'll see, when we create the final spinning uh, animation, we say how many images we've got uh, in the sequence. So I've moved it slightly, take another shot, move it slightly again, take another shot, again, shot, shot, now, at this point, I'm going to do something a little bit, you might think, strange with the uh, animation. We don't actually have to have the full animation of it just turning around for the whole time. I'm going to animate the doors on this opening as part of that animation. So, my next shot, I'm going to keep this exactly where it is. I'm just going to open the doors very slightly. Open them slightly again and a little bit more now the doors are open i'll carry on with the spin so what we'll see in the animation of this we'll see the car turn round the doors open and then carry on spinning and at a particular point i'm going to have to do this in reverse to close the doors again so that when it gets back to that um start position the doors are are actually closed so it matches up as it goes round so Let's just move it on slightly. Take a shot, move slightly, take a shot. And the more images we put into this, the smoother the animation will actually be. Now the car is facing away. This is the direct opposite position to uh, when I open the doors, I'm going to take this as the opportunity to start closing the doors as part of the animation. So we just close them very slightly. That little blob of blue tack makes sure that the car doesn't move as I do this. And almost closed. And then finally closed. And now we carry on with the rotation. And finally, we're back to the start position. So now I know this is the end of the sequence. I'll do the shot with two fingers in there to indicate that. So we've got the full sequence here of all the images. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to strike the set, the desktop studio, pack everything away, 
and join me back again a little bit later when I'm doing the editing on this. Welcome back. I've got all the images here in Lightroom and I've got rid of the images I didn't need, test shots, etc., uh, including the two shots with my, my fingers in. So I've ended up with a sequence of images going uh, numbered sequentially from 1 to 38, as it turned out. And I'm not going to go through the whole editing process on here, but I just want to make a few points. So let me head into the develop module, that's D. And along the strip at the bottom, you can see all the images. Now, the trick here with doing these sequences is to make sure you apply exactly the same settings to all images. So the easiest way to do that is click on the first image, control A to select all of them and make sure auto sync over here is selected. Now you can see I've already done some edits on these. I've already done a crop. So if I move to a different image in the sequence, you can see they're all within that same uh, bounding box, that same crop that's applied to all of the images. If I want to do a change and just purely for uh, for showing uh, this, I'm going to do a, let's say a dehaze change because you can see this. And if I haze it down on one image, you'll be unsurprised to see that that gets applied to all the images. So they're all hazy. Well, we don't want them all hazy, so I'm just going to undo that and that undoes for all of them. So make sure you apply exactly the same settings to every image. I've come out of crop as well. And that will give you a sequence of images. Now, important to know your first image is your start image. Your last image is the one directly before it get back it gets back to that same position so that the sequence goes round in a circle as uh, you do the 360 degree uh, rotate so we now need to export all these images again control a to make sure they are all selected and export we are going to export these to a specific folder and I'm going to call mine car 360 demo. You want to rename them, make sure the last two digits are sequential numbers. So I've got a rename to web on there. I'm going to take that off and we can see my extensions already have a couple of sequential numbers on the end. So that's fine. And I want JPEG sRGB because they're going to be shown on the, um, on the web and size we want to make them a reasonably small size we don't want them too large and so i am going to say long edge and long edge of let's say 1000 i'm going to remove normally i keep all metadata but because I need to need these to load quickly, the only things I want in there are my copyright information. I can choose to put my watermark because it would appear in every image, but to keep things nice and simple, I am going to remove that. And then once the export is over, we're going to show in Explorer. So let's export the images. So here we are in Explorer with all the images. And just a quick tech check for you about the images. Select the first one, go to view, make sure your preview pane is selected as it is here. You can then slowly step through and just make sure that everything works on the sequence. See the doors opening and it carries on going round. And that's looking quite nice as we go all the way around. And then the doors start closing again and it finishes off the rotation. So I know all that's going to work. To create the 360 degree spinning image on the website, we're going to use a WordPress plugin. Now, if you haven't got WordPress, I think this is still possible uh, through the um, 
uh, the website that I'm using, uh, but it's so much easier if you have. Let me head over to WordPress. I'll show you the plugin. Here's the plugin. It's a 360 degree JavaScript viewer. So if you search for that within your WordPress plugins and install it, this is the screen that you will get. And it's really a very powerful plugin. Now I'm using the free version here, so you don't necessarily need to buy the, the paid version. Uh, I would feel sort of duty bound to upgrade to the paid version if I'm actually producing these specifically for a client. I, as I mentioned earlier in this video, I trained a client on how to do it herself rather than me producing one for her. But uh, here we go. Um, once you've got the, the plugin installed, you'll see it appear on the list of plugins. And to then create your spinner, you need to make sure that sequence of images are uploaded to uh, your WordPress site. And you'll find down here uh, within uh, your WordPress plugins, the 360 degree JavaScript viewer uh, is there. You can actually go through the steps here. You can just select your first image to get started. And it asks you to select an image from your image library. And you can see here, I've previously uploaded one of uh, Doc Ock from uh, Marvel. And you want the image that's number one in the sequence. Now, just a word of warning uh, with this. This doesn't actually work for me because as you can see, I'm using Amazon AWS to host my images, and there are some issues with that, uh, namely this um, ID that appears in the in the sequence with it. So all the images have to be in the same folder. Now, the way I get around that is to upload using uh, another application. Uh, this is the S3 browser. And you can see I've already uploaded the sequence of images here uh, into a folder on my Amazon server. What I need, having uploaded them all, is I need, first of all, to make sure that all the images are readable by everyone. So set your permissions accordingly. We need the URL of the first image. So make sure I'm clicked on the first image. And in this particular app, it's down here. So I can just copy that. If you are able to do this directly through uh, the plugin, you'll find that you just select the image, the first image, and then say, this is the first image in the sequence. Now that will fail if I was to do that now. So I'm going to back out of that and come into it a different way. So I'm going to go directly to the website, open a new tab, and the URL is uh, www.360-javascriptviewer.com forward slash WordPress. And you get the uh, little introductory video, but scroll down and you can um, generate your WordPress codes here. So what I do is highlight that and paste in that URL that I copied earlier. And it goes through, and because they are in a sequence, it finds all the images in that order. Counts them up, 38, we decided there was 38 earlier. So now we can just test it all out and see how that all works. That's nice. And if I scroll down, this is the information that we now need. And there's three options, the WordPress one, uh, uses the uh, WordPress shortcodes. So if you've got the plugin installed, you can just simply copy that code. If you want to embed it a, a different way using iframes, you can just uh, copy that. You can indeed just create um, a share link as well. Uh, but the um, I would say the best way to do it is with the WordPress shortcode. So I'm just going to copy that and now I go over to my website and add that in. So I'm just going to go and let's say page add new. This is just going to be a test page 360 car test. I prefer to do this on the text tab rather than the visual tab, but all I have to do is just paste in uh, that code. Should it should be exactly the same on either tab, but I just prefer to do it on the text one. 
publish takes just a moment to save the uh, the page and if i go to view page and you can see we now have the final embedded image on here which i can move around now it's gone full width on the screen but that's just how i have my web pages set up uh, i would if i was using this normally i'd put this into two columns so this was probably on one side and some text about the product on the other uh, but i just wanted to show you the technique uh, on that and you can see i can just spin it around with doors opening and closing and that's uh, job done so i hope you found that tutorial helpful um, if you did please hit the like button and subscribe for uh, for future updates and if you want to know some other uh, photography techniques then uh, have a look at the playlist that's on the screen now and i'll see you in the next video uh, until next time thanks for watching and keep making great photos bye for now